Hi, I'm Cheryl. I've got a um, an uber feminine thank you card for you today. So pretty. Oh, this is the this is the materials and things, stamps, and all you're going to need. I have a piece of flirty flamingo cardstock, and that's five and a half by eight and a half, and it's scored and folded at four and a quarter. The piece of whisper white that's five and a half by four and a quarter. It's going to be cut down, so don't worry about that. And we have another piece that's let's see what how big is this? That's about an inch and yeah, say an inch and a half by um, four and a quarter. I'm using the Painted Harvest stamp set. I'll be using this sentiment right here, your kindness, blah, blah, blah. I'm using this sentiment also, I am thankful for you. That will go on the front of our card. And I'm using the, the two sunflower stamps and the sunflower center. And over here is a tiny little cluster of five dots. We're using that also. I have a set of Spellbinder um, dies, and these are, let's see, this is A2 Scalloped Borders 1. We'll be using two of those. There's one that looks like, um, like dotted, I don't know what that is, dotted Swiss or whatever, but it's, this is, this is the one I'm using. And then just the the one that just cuts the edge out. It has it's a nice set. Let me show it to you real quick. It's got it's got two other um, sets here that will cut just an inside piece, and then you can add one of these borders to it to cut cut the edge and it's got one that's just the just the plain one that we're going to be using and it has this one with the it's got little dots and then this one has um, like a dot and a dash this one has a little different kind of dots on it they get start small and get bigger towards the center and then there's also this one this is an edge one also that you could combine with one of these so but anyway it's a nice set and um, I'll put a link to a website where I, I found they had some um, they had the um, spellbinders dies at a really good price I'll put that link down below any Tombow glue I'm using a um, let's see it's a 7 8 inch wide ribbon and it's transparent it says, I know that because it says it on the side here. It says transparent and sheer. It's made by Offray. I got it. They, they had some sale going at Joanne Fabrics. Um, and it, it is a really lovely ribbon, as you can see. So, anyway, if you don't have this ribbon, use what you have. I don't have enough ribbon. I have three drawers full of ribbon, and I had to go and buy more when they had that sale. Anyway, I have, I'm using the Memento Tuxedo Black Ink, Pink Pirouette, Flirty Flamingo, and Basic Gray for this card. And I have... I have, you probably know what one, these are. Maybe you have one stashed away somewhere. Um, it's a hair pick. And I'm going to be using this to make the bow today. I may, I've i made them with a hair comb. I've made them with, I did a fork with fork bow with, with an actual fork. And now I'm going to use a hair pick. If you've got a helper somewhere that has fingers, all of my finger, all of my helpers have paws, so they're really not much help. But you could even make your bow 
with a person holding their fingers up. It's a wonderful technique to know. So we'll start by stamping our, our um, we're going to actually make a, a um, designer paper. And I'm going to start with the pink pirouette. And then the more filled in flower stamp. That's this one. Okay. So my pink pirouette ink is real juicy. I just inked that up. So let's see how we do with that. And we're just going to stamp all over. And you're going to go off the edges. We're going to fill that in as much as possible with these flowers, just randomly stamping them. Let's see. I'll put one here. Get one coming in here from the side. If you don't have a um, silicone craft mat like I have, you might want to put some scrap paper down. And that will, that will keep your mess to a minimum. But I have, I have a silicone mat and I've got plenty of baby wipes to wipe it up. Okay, then moving on to the, the other stamp, and that, that would be this one. You see, that one has a little more detail to it, and we're going to use our Flirty Flamingo next. And we're going to stamp over that, and I'm sure there's a way to, you're supposed to line these up, but I don't do anything I'm supposed to. I just stamp, stamp, stamp however I feel like stamping it. And they, this is such a forgiving, um, you know, one of these watercolor stamps, they're, they're just so forgiving that, that it doesn't really matter that much. Let's see. Make such a such a pretty flower. It's very with the two-step stamp like this. It makes it makes it dimensional. I love this stamp set. Okay, now we can go on to our flower centers, and we're going to be cutting away part of this card, part of this paper. We'll get to that in a bit. Now, with my basic gray, I'm going to stamp the flower centers. And I just try to get it in the center of the car of the flower there as best I can. If it's not quite right on, then it doesn't matter. Because these are supposed to be very painterly and... Um, kind of sketchy. Okay, there we go. So that's all done. Oh, I have to do, I have to keep that out. Then with the basic gray, I'm going to use my little dots. And I'm just going to fill in in between my flowers, just like so. Putting them on kind of filling in kind of thick between my flowers. I guess you'd call it thick. And since I don't know what part of this I'm going to cut off just yet, I'm going to do, I'm going to get up. I think I'm going to end up cutting down here. So, so I'm probably done. I should quit quit playing with the dots now. And we'll keep our 
basic gray handy with our memento black because we'll be using those again in a bit. We'll be using the memento for the first time, but we'll be using the basic gray in just a little bit. Let me clean this all up real nice. There we go. So now I need to bring my big shot in. Did I tell you you need a big shot? You need a big shot. Okay, so this will be used on this one. And this will be used on this one. Need to clear a spot. I have all kinds of things on my table here. And up comes the big shot. I'm using my magnetic plate, but I'm also going to use tape on it. The reason being is my plates are terribly warped. I should put them in the oven and bake them, or I should just buy myself some new ones, but I haven't done either of those things yet. So I'm going to take a pen, and with a ruler, I'm going to measure up two inches. I'm going to make just a little tick mark off the side here right on the edge at two inches. I'm going to take my plain border die, that's this one, and I'm going to place that. Now on these dies, they have these little grooves here. That's not a manufacturing defect. The one on the end here, that will line up with the edge of a five and a, five and a half inch. Um, span. This one here, four and a quarter, which is just exactly the size that our paper um, is, and they've got it on both edges of it. So we're going to take our die and place it on here, and those little tick marks I made, I'm going to have that, I'm going to have that showing in my little, that little, um, that little divot. Then I know this is perfectly lined up. And I'm going to take a bit of tape. I know I'm using the magnetic platform, but I want to make sure that this stays down. I have my tape on the part that's going to be thrown away, just in case it sticks too well. I'm going to send this through. I'm going to position it like this, because they tell me that it's better to cut long way. Who tells me this? I've seen it in a lot of videos. Yeah, I watch videos too. I'm a YouTube junkie. I'm gonna run that through and cut that. Okay. You really don't need to run it through and back. I just do that because it makes it easier for me to pull pull out at the end. I don't have to reach around the other side. Okay, so this bit, we can either throw it away or keep it. Maybe we'll use it some other time. But I have I have way too much stuff that I'm keeping for other times. So I'm going to toss it. Okay, so now we're going to take our other die. That's this one. And we're going to put that on this, this small piece of Whisper White here one and a half by four and a quarter piece and you don't have to be quite so picky on this so there's no measuring just eyeball it and and tape it down in place and then we'll send that on through cut and we're done with our die cutting so let me just oop, so much for that tape that tape needs to be retired and I'll put my two little border pieces aside here so I can that's how I remember to put them away 
make sure all my little dot my little holes are punched out and there we go we have that piece ready and we can get rid of the big shot now and get that off my table it has its own little spot on the other side of the room usually oh it just needs to be brought in every now and then for videos so now we have these two pieces and they're going to go on just like this. You see? So I'm going to put some Tombow glue on here. I'll just put it not too close to the, the little dots, but we want, we want sufficient to make it stick down. And I'm going to take my, my background paper that I made here, and I'm going to just get that on there just how I like it and there we go that's all stuck down now and look how pretty that is isn't that nice and it it really wasn't that hard now was it so now on the border that we cut you'll see there's little there's like a half of a one of these things. I'm going to trim that off. I'm going to put that in my trimmer. And if you saw my other video, I used the Rose Wonder stamp set also with this um, with this painted harvest one. Um, you'd be happy to see that my trimmer, everything snapped back into place. If you didn't see that video, um, I dropped it from about three foot up onto a tile floor and every piece that could come off of this came off but nothing broke and it all just snapped back in, into place and it's as good as new so I was real pleased about that so what I'm doing here besides chattering is I'm for my last full little circle I'm lining the edge of that, or the part in between the last full one and the cutoff one. There's a groove in your cutter where it cuts. And I'm lining that up right where it's in between. I'm going to trim that bit off. So we have one full cut, or one full um little loop see it was like this with that half of one now it's like this and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side now flip it over for this side and I'll do the same thing I line that up with the cutting the groove where it cuts and There we go. Now that side was a little, cut a little rough, but I'm just going to trim off the fuzzy bits. Because I just re-inked that, remember I said I just re-inked that pink pirouette. Um, looks like the ink was a little bit wet. Still, it was probably sloppy, sloppy wet. And it didn't cut very nice, but that's okay because I could just trim that little bit off that was hanging out. Now we're ready to bring in our flirty flamingo card base. And take my Tombow glue and glue all around here. Ah. You hear that? that's one of my craft room assistants clearing the other side of the table for me. And we're going to center this side to side and leave the same amount at the top. Okay, and there we go. Got that done. That's glued down. It's lovely. Now we need to bring back in our basic gray 
and I'm going to use the I am thankful for you stamp. I'll ink that up. And this print is such that if you don't get it quite lined up properly, it still makes it look nice. I don't know how they do that because all the letters are straight and lined up. But there's that done. And we'll open this up and stamp it with the other bit. But I'm going to use the Memento Black for that. And this one says, um, let's see, your kindness means so much more than you will ever know, which is nice. Of course, you can make this card anything, anything you want. Just switch up the sentiments. It'll be good. So I'm going to stamp this, oh, about three quarters of an inch down and then center it side by to side. And one, two, three, and there's our impression. But I want it to jazz up the inside a little bit. So I'm taking this little dot stamp and the basic gray. Go back to my basic gray. And I'm going to stamp some dots here. So they kind of encircle the the top right side and then down here. So they kind of encircle the the um, bottom left side. And oh dear, I got a little ink on my, had ink on my fingers, I guess. Oh well. Those things happen. So I'm just going to stamp these. And that's enough there. Oh, here comes my assistant. You notice the, the light dimmed? <laughs> okay. So let's see. What can I do with this? Maybe I'll, I'll put a couple down here too. All right. There we go. I hid the smudge. So... So that's the inside of the card, and we're done. So who would have thought this was so easy to do? So if there are any Stamping Up products that you'd like to purchase, you can do that either through my Facebook page or my website. I'd love if you came shopping with me. I'm, I'm quite the shopper, you know. Um, oh, we didn't put the bow on. Oh my goodness, I almost forgot the bow. And that that just makes it. It really does. Okay, let me get my bow out here. My, or my ribbon out here. If I can peel this apart. Hmm. This will take longer than making the whole rest of the car. There we go. There we go. I got the edge. I got the edge. Here we are. Okay. Now I'm going to need about 18 inches of this ribbon. So let me measure that out and cut that off. And I take my my uh, hair pick and I'll lay this down. And I'm going to leave a good. Oh, I don't know. Let's see, three, four inches. I'm going to have three or four inches hanging loose here. I'm going to wrap it around like so. So it makes a, this V shape. And then this will come back. And move that up a little bit. And we're going to tuck that right down through the middle opening on my hair, on my hair pick here. Bring that through and up. And remember, the back part is going to be the front of the bow. So we want to fold up our, our ribbon as we pull it through. You see how I, I've got that folded? So I want to make sure that looks nice. Then I'm going to grab my two ends and just tie it in a knot. 
And we want to pull this good and tight. Good and tight. There. There we go. And look at our gorgeous little bow. And we can kind of tweak the tweak the tails a little bit. So they lay nice. And then somewhere around here I had a I have a glue dot. Now what in the world did I do with it? Well, I don't know. It must have crawled, it must have just fell down in that black hole in my craft room. Let me grab another glue dot. I thought I was being pretty clever and have everything right here where I needed them. So, I'll just get myself another glue dot. And I'm just, I'm going to roll my glue dot up a bit because it's bigger than I need. And it's actually stuck on my thumb now. I'm going to put that on the back of the bow. You'll be able to tell which is the front and which is the back. The front is going to look much prettier. And I'm going to place that pretty much up towards the top here. We just don't want the loops of the bow hanging off the edge of the card. And decide how long we want our tails. We'll cut these at an angle. I believe I cut my other ones at, you know what, I cut my other ones as a fish tail. And this is how you do that. Fold your ribbon in half and from the outer edge, it's got to be the outer edge, cut at an angle towards the center fold and you'll have a little little fishtail bow and it's a good um, good thing to know so from the outer edge cut at an angle towards the center and you have a little fishtail and now our card is done so now, if you'd like to purchase anything from Stampin' Up, then I would be so happy if you'd come and shop with me. And you can do that either through my Facebook page or my website. Um, I'll have all the materials that I use today listed down below. And you all take care. Stay safe. I'm thankful for you. And happy stampin'.